My name is Guido Mastrangelo. Guido Mastrangelo from C. M A S T R A N G E L O. How do you pronounce that? I'm oh, sorry. How do you pronounce that? Mastrangelo. Well, thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. In Section 1-130 of the Legislature's Regulatory Statute, the Legislature granted DNR authority to adopt rules to carry out the Legislature's purposes. There are at least two legislative purposes in the statute. While the Legislature intended to create the statutory authority for horizontal fracking to occur in law, it also explicitly conditioned its approval of the horizontal fracking on the safeguarding of public health and public safety and the protection of the environment. This purpose is set forth explicitly in two places in the regulatory statute, Section 1 75 A2 and Section 1 53 A4. DNR has acknowledged the former verbatim in its proposed Section 245.800. The Legislature Section 1 7582 and DNR's proposed Section 245.800 states as follows All phases of high volume horizontal fracturing operations shall be conducted in a manner that shall not pose a significant risk to public health, life, property, aquatic life, or wildlife. The term significant risk is not defined and that will be problematic. But with respect to the legislature's purposes stated in section 1 53 a 4 DNR has changed the legislature's language in its proposed rules. And this change would result in lowering the standard explicitly created by the legislature. The legislature stated as follows in section 153 a 4 The department shall issue a high volume horizontal hydraulic fracturing permit with any conditions that the department may find necessary, only if the record of decision demonstrates that, uh, uh, sub, subsection four, the proposed hydraulic fracturing operation will be conducted in a manner that will protect public health and safety and prevent pollution or diminution of any water source. But VNR's proposed section 243.300 uh, on a permanent decision changes the legislative words will be conducted to, as proposed, are reasonably expected to be conducted. This is a lowering of the standard that is inconsistent with the, the legislature's stated purpose. Many people are making comments about other specific omissions and inadequacies of the proposed rules. Among them, the proposed rules do not address locating fracking wells or disposal wells in high-risk seismic zones. The proposed rules do not address locating uh, uh, excuse me. The proposed rules do not provide for testing produced water for radioactivity. The proposed rules do not address the severe lightning noise pollution created by high volume hydraulic fracture. The proposed rules do not address the use of depleted uranium in the explosive charges used for hydraulic fracture. The proposed rules do not require the consent of all landowners under whose land the horizontal well bores will travel. Those rules do not adequately protect the quantity and quality of our water. There are many more. All the residents of Southern Illinois are depending on you on DNR to protect their health, their safety, and the safety of their water, air, and soil. Many of us believe that this first effort on your part falls woefully short. And this view is shared by many, many others around the state and around the country. The legislature has directed DNR to report to the legislature by February 1st, 2014 with recommendations concerning the potential impact of horizontal hydraulic fracturing on public lands and other natural areas, uh, the availability, on the availability of water for human consumption and general domestic use, and the potential for influence in natural seismic activity. We believe that by the time DNR reviews all the comments made here and throughout the public comment period, any conscious conscientious report will need to express grave concerns about the safety of horizontal fracturing <coughs> under current technology. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rich Whitney, uh, WHIT NY. I'm a local attorney who reside in Carbondale, also serve as chair of the Illinois Green Party, 
and I'm on the legal committee for say. Um, a lot of what I had to say has already been said by others, but I wanted to focus on what is missing from these regulations. Conspicuous by its absence in the proposed regulations are the words earthquake, and with only three exceptions that I could find, at least in part 245, the word radioactive, and that only with respect to testing of groundwater and flow back water only, and procedures for uh, the companies to uh, escape liability. What about produced water? What about scale in the pipes and tanks? What about monitoring workers' exposure to radioactivity? I don't see anything in the regulations that provide adequate protection in these areas. According to studies by the Illinois State Geological Survey in the 1950s and 70s, Illinois shale, the source rock for our oil and gas reserves, has above average levels of uranium for back shale. This uranium decays into radium and radon. Moreover, the U.S. Geological Survey has found oil field brine or produced water in southern Illinois to have radium levels that average more than 1,000 picocuries per liter, which is 67 times the maximum contamination level allowed by the EPA. The radioactive levels for produced water from shale gas operations are likely to be two to four times higher than oil field brine, on average 2,000 to 4,000 picocuries per liter. Moreover, when produced water is removed along with the hydrocarbons, excess radioactive salts in the water precipitate out and become scale on pipes or tanks or sludge in the bottom of tanks or pits. The level of radioactivity can exceed 100,000 picocuries per gram and constitute a clear and present danger to workers or others who are exposed to recycled scrap metal from gas and oil operations. This level greatly exceeds the radium levels in uranium mine tailings, for example. That is why high levels of radioactivity elsewhere have been found in school playground equipment and bleacher and school sports stadiums. Do we really want untested oil and gas field scrap metal sold into Illinois markets? These kinds of problems are why Illinois has a low-level radioactive waste management act. It and OSHA are the applicable state and federal laws. These regulations, as far as I've been able to determine, don't take account of these standards, and they need to if we are to uh, protect ourselves. With respect to the absence of the word earthquake in the regulations, uh, granted, I haven't read through part 240 yet. I'm still working my way through that and, and we'll be submitting more comments uh, either online or another format. But uh, I would point out from what I have read that the focus seems to be on whether or not the uh, fracking operation may be causing earthquakes. And in that regard, I would urge you to be looking at the standards established by the National Academy of Sciences but what we're not taking into account of is the, is the flip side of this, and that is what if there is an earthquake, whatever it's caused, and the impact on injection wells and ongoing fracking operations. In my view, the only possible way to protect public safety and health with respect to the earthquake danger is to not allow fracking in earthquake, earthquake prone zones, meaning where there's active earthquake faults, like the two that we have down here in southern Illinois. Fracking should be banned in areas where that constitutes a danger, which would include near the, uh, near the two active earthquake falls in this region. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening.
I am a lifelong environmentalist. That's 70 years. I would like the IDNR to lead the charge against fracking. And thank you. And I am amazed that you do not see that as your most sacred responsibility. Uh, I the uh, Department of Natural Resources, that is the Department of Water, Soil, and Air. We are poisoning every component. We get one serving of natural resources. Hey, no seconds. 